the boy that stopped believing in Batman and hunts down clowns. Who is Clown Hunter and what drove this kid over the edge becoming a potential threat in Gotham? We're going to answer that in this video. To start off, Clown Hunter's first appearance is Batman Volume 3, Issue 96. Balfam, aka Clown Hunter, was the son of restaurant owners in Gotham Narrows. Five years prior to the present, both of his parents were forced serving Joker, Harley Quinn, and a couple of his henchmen. After the food was served, Bao's parents were killed by the Joker. Batman later entered the crime scene and had a talk about admitting to him that he's sorry Bao lost his parents. Bao was a believer in superheroes, especially Wonder Woman, and asked what Batman was going to do. Batman responded that he would stop the Joker. But as the years went on, the Joker was free and Batman stopped him multiple times and then went on and on until Bao stopped believing in Batman and his way of dealing with criminals like Joker. One day during the Joker War event, a couple of Joker's followers stirred up trouble in Bao's neighborhood and burnt alive one of his elderly neighbors. This set Bao off and he took a battering Batman gave him years prior and stuck into the end of his bat. Right away, he used the bat to off the clowns that set his neighbor on fire. From then on, Bao was known as Clown Hunter and his neighborhood supported him off in the clowns. As far as the next part, I admit this is pretty graphic, but Joker had his followers dig up his dead parents and turn them into zombies to attack Batman. And when Bao heard about it, it pissed him off beyond imagination. After the Joker War ended, Batman came to visit Bao after his recent activities as a clown hunter. They had a talk and Batman wanted to help him by giving him a card to visit Leslie Tompkins to sort out his trauma on what she does to get patched up emotionally and physically. Then he explains his backstory and what led him down to the path to becoming clown hunter. Now, in certain ways he reminds me of Jason Todd, but we'll get to that later. So when Ghostbreaker appeared in Gotham, he had his eyes set on Clown Hunter and wanted to off him to prove Bruce's way of fighting crime doesn't work compared to him. And if you guys and girls want to know more about Ghostmaker, the link is up on the top right hand corner of the video. Batman came in to protect Clown Hunter, giving him time to escape, and he went to track down Harley Quinn at her apartment. Of course, he failed trying to off Harley Quinn, and as soon as Batman Ghostmaker came to the scene, Ghostmaker then knocked out Batman, Harley Quinn, and Clown Hunter. After all that, all three of them woke up in Arkham as Ghostmaker monitored them. Clown Hunter was free and was getting ready to off Harley Quinn. Batman tried to reason with Clown Hunter and make him realize that Ghostmaker was playing him, but Clown Hunter didn't care as he wanted to get revenge on Harley Quinn. This brought some inner willpower to Batman as he broke free, helped free Harley Quinn, and disarmed Clown Hunter. Batman wanted Harley to leave, but she wanted to stay and talk to Clown Hunter about her past regrets and that she apologized for her actions with her involvement in the death of his parents. Bao then couldn't go through with getting revenge and left. Many months later after the Fear State event, Batman wanted Clown Hunter to train on the Ghostmaker and come with them to be a part of Batman Incorporated and their missions. So during the series, Clown Hunter was under the teachings of the Ghostmaker and even met his old sidekick Phantom One. In the Batman Shadow War event, Clown Hunter had a small role in aiding Ghostmaker and the rest of Batman Incorporated in protecting some assassins on Deathstroke's side. During a battle between Deathstroke and Ghostmaker, Clown Hunter was taken hostage by Deathstroke and had his wrist broken by him. After that, we don't see much of Clown Hunter, so we're going to move on to his skills and his equipment. So since he's still training on the Ghost Maker, he has intermediate level of swordsmanship and in hand to hand combat. He has a baseball bat with a battering attached to it, which we all know, and he got firearms and explosives as Batman admitted that he disarmed him when he first met him after the Joker War event. And that's it as far as his skills and equipment. So we're gonna move on to Nerf Facts and in Batman Secret Files Clown Hunter issue one. Punchline ordered some Joker files to trap Clown Hunter, and when they did, Clown Hunter was rescued by Jason Todd, aka Red Hood. Jason offered a train bow, but he declined the offer. Now, as far as my thoughts on Clown Hunter, is that he's basically the perfect character to be a sidekick for Jason Todd. I think the people of DC Comics low-key know that, but they want to use Clown Hunter for other books like Batman Incorporated. But I think it would have been a better opportunity if Clown Hunter trained under Jason and we got even more character growth from both of them. As Jason takes on a mental role like Bruce did when he was Robin trying to calm down that rage Clown Hunter has and direct it to a better outlet. As far as Clown Hunter, he can open up more to someone that has about the same level of trauma from Joker and how to deal with it, but one can only hope those two cross paths again and become partners. Other than that, that's basic for Clown Hunter. I appreciate you guys and girls for sticking with me to the end of the video if you learned something new and you enjoy the content i make be sure to like subscribe to on post locations and the links to support me will be down in the description box below and i'll see you guys later peace